Hey guys, welcome to our unboxing of the Rage from Evo Gimbals. Let's get to it and open this thing up. I do want to point out that this box has got some really nice graphics on it. Did you guys ever see Pulp Fiction? Because I'm pretty sure that what was in that briefcase was one of our gimbals and they just had it in a briefcase. I don't know why they didn't want to just use one of our plastic cases. I'm pretty sure it was one of our gimbals. We all good, Vincent. Or Jules. I guess it would be Jules. Let me unbox this thing and I'll show you how it works. Seriously. Here we go. This is what's in the case. This is a really nice rugged Pelican style case. Uh, we've got our instructions right here. Please go through and read these. These are really, really good. There's a lot of good details in here. They're going to help you out a lot when you're first getting started. Don't be afraid of these. You got your warranty card here. Don't forget to register on our website so that we have you in our, what, in our system. If there is a problem, we'll take care of it. We've got a gimbal and an extension tube for the gimbal so the batteries will fit in there. Got a charger and a USB cord. And then we've got a couple quarter 20 screws and then a little um, mount if you are using a large camera. It's a little bit of a support that will help support that larger lens. I'm going to take all of this out and I'm going to show you how to use it. Okay, so first thing out of the box, you're going to want to go ahead and charge your batteries. It's very simple. You have a USB cord and you've got your charger. You just plug your USB cord into your computer or into the wall. You put your batteries in the charger. When the lights are red, that means they're charging. And when the lights turn blue or green, that means that they're fully charged and ready to go. So I have got a set of batteries here that I'm going to use. This does come with two sets of batteries and you get about six hours of runtime with each set of batteries. So you got a full day of shooting. This should be plenty of battery power for you. So one thing I'm gonna mention, maybe more than once, is I don't want you to ever turn on your gimbal until you've got your camera on it and it's balanced. It's really bad for the motors. Um, just, it's not gonna ruin it by any means, but just don't do it if you can help it. So um, what I'm gonna do for today is I'm gonna go ahead and put this on one of our tripods. We have these available on our website. I'll put a link to it here so you can check that out as well. Um, these are really, really nice for balancing your gimbal. And if you're shooting, if you just want to set it down for a minute and go do something in between your takes, this is a really great little tool to have. So um, we're going to go ahead and mount our GH4 on here. And I am going to show you how to do that really quick. We do have a really in-depth, detailed video on how to balance and mount your camera on the gimbal. Um, I'm going to do this really fast, so we're not going to get into it too much. I'm going to put the link to that video right here so you can go check that out. And I recommend watching that because it is full of really good information on how to balance your gimbal and get it to work correctly. And the cool thing is about this is you can balance these things so quickly. It's all toolless. You don't need any special anything to do this. It's all just a matter of doing it a couple times, learning how to do it correctly. And then once you get it balanced, your gimbal is going to work really well. You're going to get a really long battery life out of it. Um, if as long as you just take the time to, to balance it correctly. So, okay. So we are balanced and we are ready to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the buttons really quick. You have a power button right here, which is the gold button on the side. Um, if you press and hold that, now it's okay to power it on because we have the camera on here. All of our little screws here are tight. Everything is nice and snug. It's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and press and hold this and you'll see a little light is going to come on here. It's, it's a yellow light. When it goes solid, you can go ahead and let go of the power button and that means it's going to fire up. So we'll go one, two, three, and it should turn on. No problem. So now you'll see that there's a light back here, this blue flashing light. And what this is doing is it's telling you how much power you have in your batteries. So when it's flashing four times, you have 100%. When it's flashing three times, it's 75. 
when it's flashing twice it's 50 and once is 25. So it's a good time to charge your batteries at one for sure and you can always do it whenever you want but um, that's going to give you a really ind good indication of when you're going to need to change your batteries and then get another one on the on the charger. So um, the joystick is touch sensitive so um, I'm going to run through all the modes with you really quick and I'm going to run through the joystick modes. When you first turn this on it's going to default into this pan follow mode. So you can see it'll pan left and right but as I'm moving the gimbal it's going to stay nice and level and flat. So this is pan and follow mode. We're going to press the button twice. So to press the button, you just push in on the joystick and you're going to feel it click. So we're going to do that twice. One, two. Now we're in the pan tilt follow mode. So now you can see as I'm tilting the gimbal forward and backwards, it's tilting the camera and it's also panning. So we can go ahead and go back into mode one by clicking it one time. Now you can see it's just in the pan follow mode. Um, we're gonna go ahead and let's show you the lock mode. So if I'm walking through a doorway and I wanna just have the camera go straight the whole way through, I can press it from the pan follow mode only. That's the only way to get to this mode and we'll click it one time and it's gonna put it in the heading lock mode. So now, no matter what I'm doing with my hand, if I'm walking around obstacles or if I'm moving around, the camera's going to stay pointing in the direction when I hit it that one time. And then you'll notice when I hit it again, it's going to release the camera and it's going to smooth out that motion. So let's say I walk through the door and I've already made my move and I'm facing this way. When I release the camera, it's going to do a nice smooth pan to go ahead and get me out of that move. So really really cool feature um, and then the really fun one is the turn back mode so if you press the joystick three times it's going to turn around completely and this is really good if you're in a car or something like that and you're trying to get two shots you have got to get a forward shot and a backward shot or whatever it is you can just go ahead and hit that button three times it's going to flip it around for you um, if you were doing a selfie thing, even if you were trying to do like a documentary or something and needed to quickly turn that thing around so that you could talk into the camera, it's going to smoothly do that for you. Let's talk about the joystick really quick because we've gone through the modes and I'm going to go back into the mode one. So now we're in the pan follow mode. So we're only panning and in this mode, you'll see that the joystick is only going to operate the tilt. If you turn it to, or sorry, if you push it to the left or to the right, it's not going to do anything. So from this mode, if we go back into that heading lock mode by pushing it once, you'll see that I can operate my tilt still and I can operate the left and right. So I have full function of the joystick at this point. And as I'm moving it, it's going to stay in that lock mode. So if I want to move it, it's all manual with the joystick. So that's actually a really cool feature there. So to get back out of that lock mode, we're going to push it once. Now I'm back in the pan follow mode and we'll go ahead and push it twice and we'll get back into that pan tilt follow mode. So this is really great if you want to go upside down. You can go ahead and flip it over and be able to film upside down. Um, these tripods are great also because they fold up. So when you are shooting, you can fold them up and keep them out of the way, especially if you're walking through tight places. Um, and from this mode, when you're upside down, if you click the mode button one time, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and put it back in to the pan follow mode, only you're inverted. So it'll hold that position. So we'll push it twice and we'll get back into the pan tilt follow mode. <clears throat> and then when you have it in this mode, the joystick won't do anything if you push it up and down. But if you move it left and right, it's going to tip the camera left and right so you can do Dutch. Really quickly, I'm going to talk about the cameras that will fit on this. We are going to make a list that's going to be on our website. Um, so keep your eye on that. Right now, these are really designed for like the GH4, GH5, the Sony uh, A7S, A7S II that size of a camera is really what these are designed for. Um, 
like I said, we are going to have a pretty extensive list. The weight range on these ones is about 300 grams to about 1200 grams. So anything over 1200 is probably going to be too big for it. And you're really going to be pushing your luck. Um, this is a pretty good size setup, but right here, this one is only 940 grams. So you can put a fairly good size lens on one of these cameras and still get away with it on this GH4. Um, so the Rage is definitely a great way to go as far as these larger cameras. Let me talk about some accessories really quick. We have these carbon fiber extension poles. They come in a set of two. Um, these are really great just to kind of, all you have to do is sort of do something like this and you can make it look like you set up a crane or a jib and are so stable. And it just takes a little bit of time to teach yourself how to use these things. Um, another great thing about the carbon fiber poles is just even one extension. You have this on there. If you're walking with it, it kind of acts like a shock absorber and your wrist takes up a lot of the bounce just from your body moving when you're walking. So we found that that's actually really cool. I've been able to run full speed as fast as I can and it looks like I'm on dolly when you just have a couple, like just one carbon fiber extension pull on this one. And it, it was really amazing how good the footage turned out. So I'm gonna go over this CCI cable with you really quickly. So this cable will work with a Panasonic or a Sony. Now there's two different ones, so you have to get the right one. One works with Sony, one works with Panasonic. You plug one end to the gimbal and the other end into your camera. What that allows you to do is use this little toggle switch that we have on the side right here. And if you move this up and down, it will zoom in and zoom out, which is really cool. And then if you quickly press the power button, it's not gonna turn it off. What it does is it fires the camera so it'll take a photo. If you press it twice, it'll start recording. And if you press it twice again, it'll stop recording. So I recommend this. I'm gonna put a link to it right here. You can go check this out on our website. I think everybody should get one of them because it's really cool just to be able to operate everything right there at your thumb. And then there's this Bluetooth remote. This is a must have in my book because all of the features that you have on your gimbal here are right here at your fingertip. If you do have this up on an extension pole or if you have it on a tall tripod or if you have it on a painter's pole or whatever you're doing with it, you could have all of the functionality, your pan tilt, everything right here from this. So go check these out. I'm gonna put a link to it here and I'll have a link in the description of all of these items that we have. We'll go ahead and shut the power off on this real quick. And if you just push this in and hold it for about three seconds, the power will shut off. Now the motors are inactive and we're done with this video. So thanks for watching and uh, go watch Pulp Fiction again because it was really a really good movie. It was good.